Buenas noches, clase. Uh, yo soy profesor Olin. Uh, vamos a hablar un poco de los verbos en el presente. So, present tense verbs is what we're talking about uh, tonight. And here I have them written out. I'm going to go through each one of these. So, please uh, follow along with me as, uh, as I go through this. Verbs are very important in Spanish. Uh, we have a very different rule in Spanish than in English. In English, we always start with a subject. Um, the subject tells us who's doing the action. And we have a very set rule in English that tells us about these subjects that we don't change. I go. He goes. We go. We need the subject to tell us who's doing the action. That doesn't happen in Spanish. Well, it does. The subject does tell us, but the verb also tells us. Here in English, you notice we really only have I go, he goes, we go, she goes, they go, you go. There's only two conjugations. The verb only changes the form once. Go and goes. So we, but we've already noticed, learned in Spanish that so we have a lot of different what we call conjugations. And basically what a conjugation means is that we're making the verb uh, tell us who is doing the action, or the verb indicates who's doing the action. So, and it does so by the ending. So the endings of our verbs tell us who's doing the action. So, as we know, we have the yo form, the tu form, the usted form, the nosotros form. Here's the vosotros form that they use in Spain. We're not going to cover that uh, all that much here. I will say a little bit about it when we get uh, down there. Um, and then the ustedes form. So we're not testing on the vosotros form, so for the most part you're going to see dashes in there. But we start out with our regular verbs, AR verbs. And they mean that they're regular, they have a regular pattern. Basically, they'll all end with the same ending, an AR, an ER, or an IR. So we drop off that AR ending, we add on these endings, and that's all we do. We just plug it in. So example of an AR verb, our first favorite one is... Hablar. So we drop off the AR and we just add the endings. AR is gone. Hablo. Hablas. Now, who can be doing this action? Well, it ends in an O. And that corresponds to the pronoun yo, which means I. So yo is the only person that can be doing this action. I am the only one that can do this. The same thing with tu. Tu hablas. Yo hablo. Tu hablas. Now, in your practice, when you're speaking these, say those pronouns every single time so you can get it in your head that the yo goes with the o, the tu with the as, the usted with the a, the nosotros with amos, the vosotros with ice, which you'll learn later, and habla. So, yo hablo, tú hablas, usted habla, nosotros hablamos, and ustedes hablan. And remember, this can mean a and ella as well, and this can also mean ellos and ellas. So, yo hablo, tú hablas, usted habla, nosotros hablamos, vosotros habláis, ustedes hablan. And that's how we conjugate the verbs. What this does is this kind of makes these pronouns irrelevant because, or well, not irrelevant, but redundant. Redundant is the best word. Because this hablo, it means that only I can do it. This amos, it means that we can do it. As means only two can do it. The same thing with vosotros ais. Now there is a little bit of ambiguity with habla and hablan. So again, use the pronouns to tell us who's doing those actions if you ever get lost. But most of the time, if it's already been mentioned in the sentence, or it's been mentioned in the previous sentence, or in the paragraph, or you know who you're talking about, we'll drop those pronouns off and we'll just say, hablan con su profesor. Who is, the, who is doing it? Oh, ellos, los estudiantes. Why? Because we've been talking about estudiantes before we know that. So that's kind of how uh, that works with, with the conjugation. So we start out with AR verbs. Hablo, hablas, habla, hablamos, hablais, habla. Then we move on to ER verbs. And those are our endings for the ER verb. O, S, E, hemos, ace, and N. 
You drop off the ER, add those endings. Comer, yo como, tu comes, él come. Nosotros comemos, vosotros coméis, ellos comen. And we do the same thing with IR verbs. Vivir, yo vivo, tú vives, él vive. Nosotros vivimos, vosotros vivís, ellos viven, viven. Okay? Now, we also learn in lección uno, the very first verb that we learned was actually an irregular verb. It was ser. And we don't really worry about what ser, how it's irregular. We just memorize that it means, and it means to be. Okay? It means to be. I am... Estar also means to be. We're going to learn about the differences between ser and estar and lección cinco. Don't get ahead of ourselves. They both mean to be, but they're both irregular. We know that we use them in different, uh, different settings. Yo soy, tú eres, usted es, nosotros somos, vosotros sois, ellos son, ustedes son. Está, yo estoy, tú estás, él está, nosotros estamos, vosotros estáis, ellos están. So again, the rule, same rule applies. The only person that can be soy is yo. The only person who can be estoy is yo. Same thing. Tu estás, tu eres, nosotros somos, nosotros estamos. Ustedes son, ustedes están, ellos son, ellos están. Notice the similarities. Okay? This ends in an S. We've seen that this ends in an S, this ends in an S, this is a two form ends in an S. This one does too, it's irregular, we know that, we have to memorize it. Notice the most. It's in all of these forms. There are some similarities between them. This ends in an N. This ends in an N. Okay? Now, those are the first two regular verbs that we learned. Ser and estar. Then we learned ir in uh, chapter 4. Yo voy. Tu vas. Él va. Nosotros vamos. Vosotros vais. Ellos van. Now we notice that this hoy sometimes replaces the yo form. And there's a few verbs that, uh, that do that, and, and we have to just memorize which ones those are. There's not really a pattern that tells us or anything. It's just they do it, we learn it, we memorize it. So, ir is one of those. Yo voy, tu vas, el va. Ir, IR verb, because it's IR, but look at it. It's actually behaving most commonly like an AR verb. All these endings here are your AR verb endings. Why does it do that? I don't know. That's the way they decided they were going to do it in ancient Spain, and, and that's how it goes. Yo voy, tu vas, el va, nosotros vamos, ellos van. Another one we're going to add on here, and we'll come back to it later, is oír. Uh, it's also going to fit into this category, um, just because every single form is a little bit different. And like I said, we'll come back to that one. But that's another irregular verb. And there are some others that you're going to encounter as well. This isn't a list of all the verbs that are there, but this is just a common... Uh, Thread, there's some common patterns that you'll see that you watch out for. So, OER is one of those. All right. So, those are irregular verbs. We memorize them. Okay? We know what they mean. We're going to learn a little bit about how to use said and how to use a stat. Again, there are some differences for now. Um, we have them separate for you. But in chapter five, we'll start to put them together and you'll figure out which is which. It's rather easy. Then we have a next category. Some of these just have an irregular yo form. So saber, this is a great verb. Because if we're following our pattern, we're learning here to conjugate, we'll follow the pattern, the yo form would be what? Drop off the er. Drop off that er. And the o would be sabo. And then the rest of the verb would be sabes. Sabe. Sabemos, sabes, and saben. But sabo, oh, it just doesn't roll off the tongue that well. It is incorrect, so we erase it, and we replace it with sé. Yo sé. Yo sé que ustedes pueden aprender los verbos. Yo sé, I know. Yo sé. We put an accent on it, on the yo form. Again, we just have to remember that. So that sabe has an irregular yo form. But the rest of the verb follows the, uh, the pattern. The same thing with da. Da means to give. Again, we see the doi, the oi pattern that we saw over here. Some verbs do that, and da is one of them in the yo form. Yo doi. 
But the rest of the verbs, the rest of the pattern follows, uh, follows an AR verb pattern. Das, da, damos, dice, and dine. Okay? In regular yo form. Now, let's look at veo. Veo. Think about this one and tell me to yourselves or say to yourselves, why is veo irregular? It doesn't look all that irregular. But if you break it down, what we're doing is we're taking the verb, we drop off that er, and then we add on the o. Oh, oh, that's where the irregularity is. It retains that e. Veo. But the rest of them, ves, ve, vemos, ves, and ven, will follow the ER verb pattern, the regular ER verb pattern. But this does not retain that E, so actually it really doesn't look like all that different, but it is just because it keeps that E and normally it would drop it off. So those are the irregular yo forms, and those are the ones that I have listed. There's a few more that your book uh, may list. Then it also kind of lumps these into one category. I make a separate category of them. We're going to call them the go verbs, because the yo form has an irregularity that is go. So some people call them the yo go verbs or uh, that, but I, I just call them the go verbs. Poner is one of them. The yo form, yo pongo. But it's going to follow the ER verb pattern, the rest of it. Pones, pone, ponemos, pones, and ponen. Salir, salgo, but it follows the IR verb pattern. Salir, yo salgo, tú sales, él sale. Nosotros salimos, vosotros salís, ellos salen. Hacer, hago, the yo form is hago. Traer, traigo. Now this is kind of where it begins to get a little bit uh, funky. Where does that I come in? Well, it, it changes to make sure that we keep that dry sound in there and, and that, and it doesn't become a, a diphthong. So it changes to an I. So it's an irregular yo form, and we have to memorize that yo form, that it's traigo. But then the rest of the verb does follow the pattern. So, traer, traigo, traes, trae. Traemos, trae, and we won't worry about traes with vosotros, okay? But it follows the pattern, the other ones follow the pattern, but the yo form does not. Venir, we kind of learned, and tener, we learned about these in chapter 3, and they're a little bit special as well. They do have an irregularity in the yo form. Venir, uh, tener goes to tengo, venir goes to vengo. And we also have to see it goes to digo. You'll notice that this becomes an I right there. And why? Well, we're going to talk about that in a second. Because it's part of our stem changes. It's our next group of verbs. So we remember these. Now the book is also going to mention this verb right here, suponer. But guess what? This is how to make suponer. Boom. And you're done. Su is what we call a prefix. A prefix. This is how Latin-based verbs work. We can add a prefix onto them. Uh, with tener, I can do this as well. Tener doesn't look like it's a cognate, but if I put retener, retener, it begins to look like retain. De tener, detain. Sos tener, sustain. And so all I'm doing is putting on a prefix, and the rest of the verbs are going to be in the same. And guess what? These are all going to be conjugated exactly like tener. So suponer is going to be conjugated just exactly like poner. And so the book makes a, you know, a point to show it in there, but we can put postponer, suponer, uh, disponer, a whole bunch of other verbs, and they're all going to behave like poner. They're all going to have that irregular... Uh, Go form in the in the yo form. So pongo, salgo, hago, traigo, tengo, vengo, digo. And you'll practice these enough that you don't have to necessarily memorize them. They'll get there. All right. So that brings us to the next category. And remember, tener and venir are part of this category. We're going to talk about them. 
There are stem changing verbs. That means that the verb, the, this vowel in the middle of the stem, changes. So we have three types of stem changers. Well, four really. One is just only one verb, this one right here. So the first verb is the O to UE category. So the O in the middle of the verb changes to a UE, like we have with poder. Okay, this O right there changes to a UE. So it's an O to UE stem changer. And again, here we have it. We conjugate it out. Yo puedo, tu puedes, el puede, nosotros podemos, vosotros podéis, ellos pueden. Now, you'll notice that not all of the forms follow this pattern. Sometimes we refer to these as boot verb because if we draw a line around the forms that have some kind of a change in them, it looks like a boot. So those are our boot verbs. And we'll talk about these and it's important to know boot verbs uh, in the present tense because when we get to the preterite tense, and if you take my Spanish 2 class, we'll go over this very well. We'll, we'll learn those as well because they do something, the, the, the boot verbs do something funny in the present tense and in the preterite tense as well, as, as well in the present tense. So, puedo, puedes, puede. Podemos and podéis, they're outside of the boot. Those forms don't change in the nosotros and the vosotros form. And that's why I wrote the vosotros form out here, is so you can see that uh, that uh, verb or that vowel does not change. It's there. So I'll go back up to jugar. Jugar is our only example of a U to a UE stem changer. So it's grouped in this O to UE stem changers. Now, so this U is going to change from a U to a UE, and we see it here. Juego, juegas, juega does not change there. Jugamos does not change there. Juega. So I draw a line around the forms that change. And I have that. Now, this ends in a go. Is it a go verb? No, it's technically not a go verb. Why? Well, because that G is there naturally, and we change that, and so it, it doesn't really naturally uh, lend itself to be a go verb. So it's, it, if you want to memorize it as a go verb and it helps you, go ahead. That's fine. It's good practice to, to maybe uh, lump those in, and if you're memorizing those, put it in there. But it really technically is not because the G is already there and it's in all these other forms. You'll notice with these forms, the G is not going to appear. But it does appear with Hugada because it has a G in there. Okay, another one is vuelvo, uh, volver. So vuelvo, vuelves, vuelve, volvemos, volvés, vuelve. Draw a line around it, and there's our boot there. Okay, the next one, and this is where Tener and Benia come in. E to IE stem changers. So this E in the middle changes from an E to an IE. Okay, except in the O form, it doesn't. But guess what? We already have this go form. We know it's a little funky, so it changes. So we can still draw a line around all the forms that change. And it's a boot verb. Same thing with Benia. Vengo. Okay. Although the yo form doesn't change there, it has the go form. I still call it a boot verb, a boot verb because it's there. Vengo, vienes, viene, venimos, venís, viene. And then we have e to ie. And I just have one of these up here right now. Pido, the e, excuse me, e to i. The e changes to an i, that e right there. Pido, pides, pide. Piden. Uh, pedimos, pedís, piden. Decir is an example of this, and again, it's going to be like this one. That's why I have to see it here, because I'm going to uh, do it right now. Find the pink. Decir. This E does change to an I. Doesn't happen with the and many, but it does with decir. And it has the go form. So, digo, dices, dice, Decimos, decís, and dice. And then we draw our pretty little line, and we have our boot again. So, digo, dices, dice, decimos, decís, dice. E to I stem changers. E to I stem changers are really important. You have to know those. They do even more fun stuff when we get to the predator with them. Okay. The only other thing 
that I want to talk about, this is, this is the present tense, this is it. That's the present tense. If you can learn this, and you can get this base of conjugating verbs, you can do Spanish. This is the key. This is it. Learn this. Memorize this. Know this. Learn it. Do more than memorize it. Practice it, practice it, practice it, practice it. Get it down, and then it's going to build on itself when you get to other verbs and other sections of Spanish. But this is it. This is where uh, the thing is. Now, it's other category of verbs. Now, if you remember from chapter, from lección 3, we had some verbs that have tener. We call them tener idioms. And uh, tener means to have. If I put K with it, tener K, I conjugate tener, and then I add the K onto it. That means to have to. Okay, and it's a special phrase that doesn't really have any other translation in English, but it means to have to. Now, you say, well, Dr. O, that ER means to have. Well, it, it's, it, yes, it's that infinitive, but when we put that K with it, it means to have to. And what is it that you have to do? You always have to do something, an action. So guess what? It's always going to come up with tener K, some form of the infinitive. Tengo que estudiar. Tienes que nada. Uh, tenemos que uh, dormir, porque es muy tarde. Uh, tenes que ir a España con nosotros. Okay? So, whenever you use tener que, you're going to use the infinitive after that. Same thing with tener ganas de. De is a preposition. And whenever you use a preposition like de o para, guess what comes after that? The infinitive. So I'm going to put para in, in, on down here as well. Because these aren't just gateway verbs. I guess I probably should call them gateway verbs, but they're gateways into speaking. The reason why they're gateways is because after them, you can use the infinitive. And so it is you're speaking and you're practicing speaking Spanish and even writing. Guess what? You use these and you're going to put an action after it. There's a rule in Spanish. And we actually call these modal auxiliary verbs. That's the big nerdy term. And so me and my linguistic nerd friends, we talk about modal auxiliary verbs. You guys don't have to. Call them gateway verbs because they're gateways to helping you communicate and to help you speak. Okay, and this is why I call them gateway verbs because guess what? You can learn how to conjugate necesitar. Yo necesito. Poder. Yo puedo. Yo quiero. Yo deseo. Yo debo. And then I can. I'll talk about that in a second. And then para. Use para. Uh, es para ir a México. Este dinero es para uh, uh, comer almuerzo. Uh, you know, we, we, if we use para and then an action after it, you don't have to conjugate it. So what you can do is you only have to conjugate this one verb because there's a rule in Spanish that says when you have two verbs, okay, that have the same subject and complete one action, and again, that's modal auxiliary verbs, it's a modal auxiliary function, okay? So like we do it in English as well, I can go to the store. I need to buy uh, batteries. I have to get better grades. That to get, to buy, to swim, the to whatever, that's an infinitive form of the verb. So we're actually doing the same thing in English. So all we have to do is conjugate tener, tener que, and then we add whatever infinitive we want. So guess what we can do? We can learn what the infinitives mean and have a, a bunch of them uh, learn, and then we can use tener que, and we can speak in the present tense. Tener que, tener ganas de, necesitar, necesito comprar, necesito uh, ir, necesito trabajar, and I don't have to worry about conjugating trabajar or or necessity, you know, those ones. I just, it's easier when you're speaking and when you're practicing. So these are what I call the gateway verbs. Tener que, tener ganas de, necesitar, to need to, poder, to be able to, querer, uh, um, to want to, uh, desear, to desire to, deber, to should to or to ought to. Now some of these can take a noun, okay? Necesito, uh, Dinero. Necesito mi coche. Necesito más tiempo. Okay, that takes a noun. But if I, if I put it with an action, it's always going to be conjugated uh, or just left in the infinitive. It doesn't have to be conjugated. Necesito terminar. Necesito whatever verb. Poder. Puedo. Whatever puedo is I can. Whatever we can. There you can't can 
a noun, so it's guess what it's going to be? It's going to be a verb. Puedo nadar, puedo uh, aprender, puedo enseñar. Quiero. We can want things. Quiero dinero. Uh, quiero más leche. Quiero um, zapatos nuevos. Quiero más ropa. Whatever. But if it's an action, I just leave it in the infinitive. Quiero ir a México. Quiero visitar con mi mamá. Quiero hablar con mis amigos por teléfono. Deseo, the same thing. Deseo escribir un correo electrónico. Debo, to, should to or to ought to. Again, this is one, the only thing that you should or ought to do is an action. Debemos uh, regresar a casa a tiempo. And IK. IK works the exact same way as tener que. They're pretty much the same thing. I means there is or there are. But if we say with K, I K, it means the exact same thing as tener que. I K estudiar. I K ir más despacio en tu vehículo, en tu coche. Uh, I K sacar buenas notas. I K ir al centro uh, de los exámenes para tomar el examen. And then again with para. You know, if we use it in a phrase um, uh, that uh, lends itself to an, an action, para afterwards is the infinitive. Now, the only one that you can use K with right now, right now, is tener que. Don't use K with any of the rest of these because that's going to create a, sub, uh, a subjunctive mood and you're not ready for that yet. Wait till Spanish 3. Hold off until then. Uh, and, uh, and it will be fun when you get there. But for right now, don't put a K on any of them, but just with tener que, tengo que, and those are your gateway verbs. That's your gateway to speaking. Because you can take these phrases and these verbs and put it with all the rest of the other ones that you've learned, and you can speak in the present tense all day long. And you know what? This sounds like cheating. Guess what? It is. It's easy, but nobody's going to notice. And so if you use these and you talk with these all day long, they will notice that you communicate. They'll notice that you're trying, that you're putting out effort. And guess what? You do that in the presentación and the conversación that you're going to have with me, you'll get your full points. That's the present tense.